Today we're going to be looking at a product which is designed to improve the Wi-Fi around your home. It's a mesh-based kit from a company called Strong. On the front of the box, tell you the model, the company name, and everything like that. It says it's 2,100 megabits per second. It's a Wi-Fi mesh home kit, 2,100. It says it's a performance. I'm presuming it means performance and reliable and anywhere and works with any modem and router. So there's no buffering, no dead spots, 200 meter square coverage, and dual band Wi-Fi 5. On the back and the sides of the box, it tells you about the connections on the actual device and how much coverage you get if you add extra nodes, which is pretty good. The nodes are the extra units. It also shows you how you set it up if you've got three units in your house, so it covers all the different areas. It tells you it works through Google Play and the App Store for the app and it tells you a few bits more features and specifications on the back. Inside the box, pretty straightforward, you've got the two nodes which came in plastic bags, you've also got the two power cables which came in plastic bags, don't think we really need these plastic bags this day and age to be honest with you, think of the environment, think of all your little fishes and stuff like that. You've also got an ethernet cable, three pieces of paperwork which to be honest with you could have been on one card with a QR code or something like that, don't really think we need a safety instructions, declarations and a manual on different bits of paperwork. So you may ask, what is mesh Wi-Fi and how does it work? In basics, you have a primary controller unit that you plug into your router or modem, and then you have other nodes around your home or office. These nodes will talk to the main controller and each other, allowing each node to extend the Wi-Fi. Creating a bubble around your house or office, when you walk from one side of your house or office, the device you are using will connect to the closest node, so you don't lose connection and reduces the chance of the speed dropping. The larger the house or office you have, the more nodes you may need to cover more area. A lot of people get mesh systems mixed up with Wi-Fi extenders, but in reality, a mesh system is more like a Wi-Fi extender times 10. Okay, so let's have a look at the units themselves. So on the front, it says strong. You've got an LED light, which I'm guessing will change color depending on if it's connected or connecting and stuff like that. It's got two tone effects. So you've got that gray at the bottom, and then you've got the sort of a creamy white at the top. You do have a sort of a cutout around the top here. Not that you can get your finger in or anything. I'm guessing that's for ventilation and the same at the bottom as well. So it allows air in and out to keep it cool and so forth. Nothing much to see on the sides, but on the back, you've got obviously the manufacturer's name again. You've got a QR code. I'm guessing you'll use that to connect up the system. You've got a WPS button as well. You've also got a reset button, which is easy to get to and you've got a LAN and a WAN connection there as well, as well as power, and the other one is identical, the exception of the QR code, it's slightly different, as well as the username and password on the bottom, which is all in there, the information, that username and passwords are there. Okay, to set these up, they're fairly straightforward to begin with, so all you do is get the first node, you plug your power cable in, bear in mind the power cable it comes with is one and a half meters long, and then you plug the Ethernet cable into the bottom connection, what says WAN, not LAN, but WAN, so that's W-A-N, so you plug it into there. So the network cable it comes with is one and a half meters long as well. Obviously, you can use a different cable if you want, and the other end of this cable will plug into your main router or modem in your house. So let's just say you're with BT, it would be a BT home hub. If it was Sky, you'd plug into the Sky box and so forth, talk, talk, you plug into theirs. Or if you've got an aftermarket one, let's just say you've got one from Strong or you've got one from Belkin, Netgear, whoever, you'd plug it into there. Basically, you'd plug it into wherever your internet connection is coming into your house or where you've got, like if it's an office, a network connection on the wall, what's wired up, you'd plug it into there. So right, so once you've done that, the light goes red and then after a while, it will turn blue. That basically means that is now set up. So what you have to do next is connect up to the actual unit with your smartphone. So that's obviously if you've got an Android or an Apple, you have to connect up to it. So you go into your wireless settings on your phone. So let's just say settings, connect up to the strong one, and it asks you for the password. The password is written on the bottom of the box here. It is very small writing, so you might need a magnifying glass or take a picture of it and obviously so you can see what it says but once you've connected up to that it'll come up with a little tick mark next to it or something along that line saying you're connected okay so that was the next step so once you've done that you need to basically set up the second unit so you're going to have to plug it in the second unit 
Now the second unit does not have to plug into your network or anything like that. You just need to plug it in using the power cable that it comes with, which is fairly straightforward. So the second power cable, again, is one and a half meters long. So make sure where you're gonna place it, the power cable is gonna to stretch to. So you just plug it in. There's no power button or turning on and off button or anything like that. And as you'll see, it comes up red. And then after a while, it, I'm guessing, will turn blue or a different color. So we just have to wait for that. So the next step, yeah, so the next step, what we have to do is while it's red, is turn the units around. Obviously, I'll look around the back of them, but while we're on camera, turn them around. We need to press this WPS button we spoke about before, which is here. So you hold that one down for about three or four seconds, and then do the same on the other unit for about three or four seconds. And then hopefully, as you can see, they're both flashing blue now, they should talk to each other and then work together. And that is pretty much it. They're up and running then. Well, let's give it a few seconds to see what happens. Okay, so as you can see, they have now stopped flashing. Obviously, we've cut a lot of the waiting time out of this video, but it took around about two minutes, which is pretty standard on these sort of devices. So just be prepared when you press the buttons, just give it some time, give it a couple minutes. For any reason it fails and one goes blue and the one goes red, just do it again, but make sure you hold the WPS button down for three or four seconds on the main one, and then do it on the second one for three or four seconds, and this should start flashing blue again, and away you go. But that's basically them set up, or in, in default mode, shall we say. So you can now position these where you want. So the first one still has to be connected to your router, so BT Hub or whatever it may be. And the second one, you can position pretty much anywhere in your house. I'd usually suggest something like central, usually near like a stairwell or something along that line. So the signal can spread out, which then allows you to connect up wherever you are in your house or your office or however you're setting these up, which is really good and really easy to do. Now, if you wanna go on to the next step, which I do advise you do, you download the app for these, okay? So the app obviously is gonna be on the app store or your Play Store or whatever type of device you're using, it should be on there. So once you've downloaded the, the app, it will look something along this lines here. So there you go, and it'll ask you to log in. Now the default login, and this is why I'm telling you, you need to really do this because you don't want the default login, is admin, admin, um, which is written on the bottom of the bo boxes. And once you've signed in, it then basically allows you to adjust the settings on these boxes. So you can add another node, so you can buy another one of these to give you even more coverage, or two, or even three more of these to give you more coverage. You can show your attached devices, so it's telling me that I've got one device connected, which is obviously my phone. It's telling me about my network, and it tells you how it's set up. So it's saying the controller, which is this one, and it's classing this one as Agent 491. And you can click in each individual one and it shows you all the settings and everything in there probably never need to do it you've got wi-fi set up so you can actually rename your wi-fi so if rather than it being called strong blah 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 and the password being the default one what's on the bottom of the box you can actually change it to whatever you want so if you wanted it I don't know. So if we wanted it as like, for example, TFT studio, we can call it TFT studio and put our own password in. And it's as simple as that. And once that password's in, obviously you'll need to reconnect all your devices up to it. You've also got other options for guest Wi-Fi. So you could have a guest Wi-Fi. You could set that up. You can call that like guest Wi-Fi or tech for text guest Wi-Fi or something along that line and put a different password in. And that will basically allow it. So when um, you have guests coming around, whether it's family or if you've got it in an office, so customers and clients, you'll be able to then set a special network up just for them so they don't interfere with any of your stuff so they won't be able to access your printers or other things on your network which you don't want them access to and you can even put a time limit on it so you can say they can only connect up for one hour or something along that line so that's totally up to you if you want to set up a guest network you got wi-fi schedule so you can basically set up a time where it works so let's just say you've got kids at home you don't want them working using the wi-fi at a certain time you can basically make it so it doesn't work between, let's say, midnight and seven o'clock in the morning or whatever it may be. You've got LED controls, so you can turn the LED lights on and off on the front. 
You've got LAN settings on there as well. So it tells you IP address and everything like that. You can change all those to however you want, which is pretty good. You've also got internet settings. So you've got DHCP connect. It's set up automatic, but you can set it up for PPOE or static if you want to as well. You've got system settings. You've got set administration, username and password. So you can basically change that from the admin admin, which I advise you do, to be honest, because if anyone ever gets access to these, they could easily log it in. And then you've got mesh restart, which basically restarts them, tells you about them, and then you can log out. So it's pretty straightforward. There's not a huge amount you can go wrong or do wrong or anything like that. So that's the basic settings for it. You don't have to do this last step, but I would highly recommend you do. Uh, and set up the Wi-Fi with your own name, your own password, and the in admin settings uh, for your own uh, admin details. But otherwise, that's it. I hope you enjoyed this video, and no, I did. Why not check out one of our other videos by clicking this box up here, or this one just down here. Otherwise, you can give us a thumbs up, like, subscribe, comment below, let us know what you think, and we'll see you next time.